The San Francisco 49ers have cemented their status as one of the most dangerous offenses in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey is breaking franchise records held by Jerry Rice and absolutely dominating teams on the ground. While at the quarterback position, Brock Purdy is performing at a level the 49ers haven't seen since Steve Young. Welcome to Josh's Football Breakdowns. Yeah, this is Larry Kruger, and 49er fans know that here on Josh's Football Breakdowns, we don't tell you what you're seeing. We let the film tell us what we're seeing. Thank you, Larry. And what we saw on Sunday was Brock Purdy executing the offense to near perfection, starting from the very first pass play of the game. The Arizona Cardinals started the game with the football, but after a few penalties, they were forced to punt to the 49ers, who immediately went downfield and scored a touchdown. With McCaffrey dominating, when the 49ers fake the handoff to him, it's impossible not to react. And look at the bottom of the screen. We can see Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, and there's two defenders out there and they're both set up to the outside, allowing Brandon Ayuk to take the inside. And the ball is right on the money. What we've just seen on these first two plays I've shown you are the same three players who would dominate the Cardinals for the entire game. Brock Purdy, Brandon Ayuk, and Christian McCaffrey. On the next play, the Cardinals send a blitz, but the protection is excellent. And because they've rushed with five, they can only have one safety back deep. And this will take away any sort of post route or this route by George Kittle, for example but it's not much help to the outside. So when Brandon Ayuk goes deep, his man has to go with him. Christian McCaffrey comes underneath of that, and we can see his man is set up to the inside, allowing Christian McCaffrey to take the outside, and it's an easy read for Brock Purdy. He's pulled down by the face mask, which is illegal. The penalty flag comes out, and now the 49ers get the ball half the distance to the goal. Punching it in from this distance is academic for the San Francisco 49ers as their entire offensive line moves to their right. But who do they have coming across the other side here? Number 83, that's Willie Sneed. And I'll tell you, Willie Sneed in this game blocked. And it is this kind of effort that has allowed him to carve out a 10-year career in the NFL, and not just playing for any team, right now he's playing for the best team in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey's gonna take this thing right through the hole, but what about that linebacker that's lurking right there? Well, notice there's nobody in front of Trent Williams, which has to be a terrifying sight for that linebacker, but to his credit, he gets off that block, and I want you to watch as Trent Williams does a good job of not holding him on the play, not getting a penalty that would set the 49ers back, letting the play work itself out, and trusting in the abilities of CMC. Touchdown 49ers, and quickly they take a 6 to nothing lead. Once again, Moody is money, and here he knocks through the first of five extra points on the day, extending the 49ers' lead 7-0. to zero. The Arizona Cardinals did some good things on offense today, but here we see another mistake, and these early mistakes would cost them a few possessions, and that would really hurt their ability to try to keep up with the high-powered offense of the 49ers. All coaches talk about a commitment to the run, but it's the coach of the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, who has the ability to draw up the plays to make it happen. And all plays succeed on the blackboard, but men make them work. So let's take a look at how the players executed on this play. 
And once again, we're going to be taking a look at the outside linebacker, number 47, Ezekiel Turner. Who's going to block him? Well, it's not George Kittle. He's going to pin the defensive end to the inside. Kyle Juszczyk blocks the middle linebacker. Debo Samuel heads downfield to block the corner. The 49ers pull Aaron Banks to take care of the outside linebacker. And once again, we see Trent Williams acting as the lead blocker on the play. So here Christian McCaffrey breaks this tackle and I think that slowed his momentum just a little bit. And if you're Arizona, that has to be an extremely fortunate break because this looks like it could go for a touchdown right here. But McCaffrey is not up to full speed quite yet and that allows Kytrell Clark to close on the play and Marco Wilson to undercut the block of Debo Samuel. The 49ers did a good job of blocking up the defensive line and the linebackers on this play, but it was the corners for the Arizona Cardinals that made the tackle. The Cardinals were able to save the touchdown, but the play still went for 12 yards. All right. We're in the second quarter now, so the teams have switched sides, but this is still the same drive. And here, Christian McCaffrey looks like he's running the wheel route. So the linebacker, Jesse Lukita, thinks, great, I can turn my attention to Debo Samuel coming out of the backfield. But he gets surprised pretty badly because McCaffrey's route calls for him to turn back to the inside. And this is a pretty funny reaction by Lakita once he realizes he's beaten. Let's talk about Colton McKivitz. Week one was a bit of a tough assignment going against TJ Watt, but he's been playing much better lately. But here, check out the Cardinals rookie defensive end stills. He gets some pressure on Purdy and look at Brock Purdy. He's looking the other way. How he feels this, I have no idea, but Brock Purdy is so comfortable just moving in the pocket. And the 49ers are being very methodical, but they are marching right down this field yet again. This play is simple. Send some blockers downfield and get the football into the hands of one of your best playmakers, Christian McCaffrey. But you can't block everybody, so McCaffrey's gonna be one-on-one -on -one with the defender here and watch as he, without even thinking, just effortlessly hurdles him and then makes his way into the end zone to pay dirt for another San Francisco touchdown. Wow. Already his second touchdown on the day, and can a running back win the MVP award? We're going to talk about that on Friday, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Jake Moody adds the extra point, and the 49ers go up 14-0. So the Cardinals get the ball, but here they're facing a fourth down. Now, they are on the right side of the 50, but when I say that, I'm usually talking about fourth and one or fourth and two. Here it's fourth and seven, but... They're going to go for it. Arizona has determined that they have been unable to slow down the 49ers offense whatsoever. So they have got to take some chances here to try to get some points on the board. Needing to get to the 38-yard line, the Cardinals put a man in motion and Talanoa Hafunga goes with him, revealing man coverage. But wait a, wait a second, what's going on here? Hafunga stays on that side of the field. Oh, those tricky 49ers. They're not in man coverage. They're in a zone. They are attempting to confuse the young quarterback, Joshua Dobbs. And in doing so, they've also covered up all the receivers for the Cardinals. Nobody is open. But Joshua Dobbs played great in this game. And here he recognizes that he has a rushing lane. And Dobbs stretches out that football to get the first down. Very impressive.
The gamble pays off, and the Cardinals are able to get on the board, making the score 49ers 14, Arizona 3. And here Arizona decides that they can get creative on defense too, rushing three and dropping some ends back into coverage. It's an interesting idea. Unfortunately, it just takes a little too long to develop, leaving a window for Brandon Ayuk. And Brock Purdy is just perfectly efficient. Bot Purdy? I think it was Schrager who coined that term. But Brock Purdy's not laughing. Here he shows that he's not here to just run the offense. He has playmaking ability. And we see this on what is arguably the play of the game. All right, check out the free safety Jalen Thompson. He is all over this route by Brandon Ayuk. He's looking right at him. But also notice his back is turned. He's not going to be in a position to make a play on this ball. Brandon Ayuk has an advantage on him with this route. And look at the pocket. Brock Purdy is already winding up to throw this football. Huge play, great catch, and it's a 42-yard gain for the 49ers. And I hope we can all just take a minute to recognize what just happened there. First of all, say it with me, what do you need to throw the ball deep? Time. Just look at that protection. This was not some play that Kyle Shanahan schemed open. With Brock Purdy at the helm, the 49ers don't have to simply rely on the scheme. He has the ability to make plays, throwing receivers open 40 yards down the field. San Francisco follows this up with a play we've looked at twice already this season, and we're going to look at it for a third time here. It seems to be one of their favorite plays. It comes up every year. They fake the run to one side of the field and sneak a receiver out on the other side. But Arizona plays the 49ers twice a year, every year, and they were prepared for this play. And they're also determined not to let Brandon Ayuk beat them deep for a second play in a row and in doing so, seeming to forget about Ray Ray McLeod. And did you notice? It looked like Brock Purdy has added another little wrinkle to his arsenal. Here he would normally set his feet to throw, and we've praised him for that on this channel before, sticking to the fundamentals. But now we see a nice throw on the run and an accurate one. This guy is gonna be hard to stop. In the blink of an eye, the 49ers are threatening again. And here it looks like Christian McCaffrey once again is heading out on the wheel route. And the defender takes that route away. But the 49ers are actually running a play common to the game of football, the Texas route. And we can see why it's so common here. It's hard to defend. But what I want you to really watch for is the suddenness with which Christian McCaffrey changes direction. Quick and decisive, but he also makes it look so easy and so smooth. And just like that, the 49ers go up 21 to three and they are pouring it on. From this angle, we get a great look at Brock Purdy just going through his reads, starting off taking a look at the right, then looking down the middle, taking a quick peek, holding everybody there, and then coming over to Christian McCaffrey. A little bit of an extra hitch here, but we'd be nuts to complain at this point, right? I mean, just go back and look. Look at the location of this throw. The dude is on fire. So the Cardinals get the ball. It's fourth and two, and they're getting ready to punt. But before we look at this, let's go back to 2021 and take a look at 49ers at Seattle. And here we can see the Seahawks are getting ready to punt. But take a look at where they are in the field. They're on their own 27 yard line. They're way backed up. Take a look at where the punter is. And now take a look at the player they actually snapped the ball to. And as far as we know, the 49ers caught him and went on to win the game. Coming back to reality, 
Here we can see the Cardinals again are very backed up, 21 yard line. Now, why would you go for it this far backed up? Well, it's only fourth and two. And once again, Arizona has decided they cannot stop the 49er offense. They need to take risks to keep up with them. So let's see where the punter is. They split the punter out wide and here's the man they're actually gonna snap the ball to. And he pushes forward and he looks to be stopped initially, but then he keeps fighting and he gets the first down. Big play for Arizona. So the drive continues and I said that Dobbs played well in this game and check out this throw. The 49ers get burned deep. Let's go back to the snap. The 49ers just send a four man rush here. So that allows them to have two safeties back deep, but the Cardinals have three receivers to one side of the field. So San Francisco shades their safeties to that side. Now, when you have as potent a pass rush as the 49ers do, that allows them the luxury of only rushing with four. So the Cardinals do leave the running back in to help with pass protection. And Dre Greenlaw is responsible for him, so he has to keep an eye on him. And all this means that the talented young rookie wide receiver, Michael Wilson, is one-on-one -on -one with Ambry Thomas. When he gives Thomas a move to the inside, Thomas bites on it just enough to allow Wilson to blow right by him. Big play, the 49ers give up 33 yards with just 37 seconds to go before the end of the first half. The 49ers go into a zone and the Cardinals put the zone defender in conflict, running two receivers into the area of one defender. All Dobbs has to do is read the defender and it's an easy read. You know, we saw some mistakes by the Cardinals in this game early and that kind of took them out of the game, but. I gotta say, I really like what they're building in Arizona. Dobbs looks really good. He's executing and he's keeping the Cardinals in this game. It's going to be 21 to 10 at the half. All right, let's move ahead to the third quarter. Fortunately for the 49ers, their offense remains red hot. And just look at this fake to Christian McCaffrey. I mean, look at that fake. He's got his hands on the football. It's impossible not to react. The 49ers are gonna have two receivers, Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, in one-on-one -on -one situations. And why are they one-on-one? -on -one? Why are these two defenders for the Cardinals on the other side of the field? Well, just like how Arizona had three receivers to one side, this time it's the 49ers who do that, having Kyle Juszczyk, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey to one side of the field. The Cardinals have to account for that. Think back to the playoff game against the Seattle Seahawks. We saw a lot of these routes where the 49ers would send the inside man deep and the outside man would come across on the dagger route and the 49ers ran this to great effect against Seattle. In fact, take a look at number 24, Starling Thomas. He thinks that that's what Brandon Ayuk is doing. He thinks he's going deep. He's completely turned around here. We'll come back to that in just a second but the 49ers can beat you in many ways. This time they send the outside man, Debo Samuel deep, and have Brandon Ayuk cut across the other way. And Starling Thomas is completely burned. He is a rookie, but he is completely scorched on this play by Brandon Ayuk's route. Ayuk is wide open. And it's an effortless throw for Brock Purdy who puts the football right on him. One of four passes that went over 20 yards in the air for Brock Purdy. All four went to Brandon Ayuk. We saw Brock throw the football deep successfully last season. So in my mind, there was never a problem with his deep ball. There was just some concerns early on in the year. Maybe he was still adjusting to his surgically repaired elbow. We took a look at those plays on this channel and they turned out to be much ado about nothing. In fact, it just seems like Brock is improving with every game and he was surgical in this game. 
driving the 49ers right down the field in the third quarter. Now here we're gonna see something very rare in the modern NFL. Count it with me, this is gonna be a seven step drop. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A bit of an old fashioned method, but it just means that Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy have the full array of tactics available to them at their disposal. Purdy takes a look to his right and it looks like he has Kyle Juszczyk, but this is second down and long. And you can see Juszczyk is still at the line of scrimmage. That's not gonna cut it on second and long. The 49ers need more. So he resets his feet and turns his attention to Brandon Ayuk, who is putting a wicked move on the defender and this wins. This would be a long gain for the 49ers, but unfortunately, the pressure gets home to Brock Purdy in an instant. And from this angle, we get a great look at Dennis Gardeck's Dwight Freeney spin move, named after the great Dwight Freeney who had a 16-year career in the NFL, including a stint with the Arizona Cardinals. And let's take a look at Dwight Freeney's spin move. Yeah, there you go. Now let's take a look at Dennis Gardex, and you can see that is just really hard to defend. Great play by Arizona, and it's a big sack in this ball game. So now the 49ers are facing third in eternity. Yeah, that's how far they have to go. And there's really nowhere to go with the football. Maybe he can get this ball all the way out to McCaffrey. He's got to huck that thing out there with pressure in his face. And the pass is just a little bit off the mark. And what I have just shown you is Brock Purdy's only incomplete pass of this entire game. 20 of 21 passing. Folks, that's good for fourth best all time in NFL history and best ever for the San Francisco 49ers. So the Cardinals are still in this game. And once again, Dobbs shows why Arizona is so excited about their prospects. Hollywood Brown scorches the 49ers for 41 yards. Let's go back to the snap. Zone coverage here, but before Fred Warner can drop back to his zone, he's got to read this exchange between the quarterback and the running back. He's got to make sure it's not a running play and this allows Brown to get in behind him. Well-designed and well-executed. And this is worth taking one more look at. Watch Huff, Fred, and Dre all react. Okay, and to really sell this fake, this was a great fake, to really sell it, they pull the guard. And when they do that, that also allows him to help with pass protection against Nick Bosa. Good, good stuff from the Cardinals. Be ready for some battles with this team in future seasons. So the Cardinals are threatening. Now, if you've hung in here for this long, it's because you know you're gonna see stuff here that you're not gonna see on any other channel. Arizona runs a play against the 49ers that the 49ers ran against the Seahawks in 2006. Let's go back and take a look. Here we can see the 49ers have a wide receiver, Arnez Battle, and we're gonna put a blue arrow on him there, okay? He's gonna be the primary receiver. And the Seahawks are playing good defense here. They have a corner matched up against him. But watch when the 49ers put Michael Robinson in motion, the Seahawks are in a zone, so the corner has to widen and now the linebacker, Leroy Hill, has to slide over and take his place. Now the 49ers have a wide receiver, the blue arrow matched up against a linebacker, the orange. And this is a mismatch and an easy read for Alex Smith. Watch this. Incidentally, Frank Gore would have over 200 yards rushing in that game. All right, look at the bottom. We can see that the 49ers have Diamador Lenore on Michael Wilson. This is very wise, but watch when the Cardinals put James Conner in motion. Lenore has to widen, and now Dre Greenlaw has to slide over and defend Wilson, a linebacker on a wide receiver, and this is a mismatch, and the results are predictable.
Touchdown, Arizona, and can you believe the score is 49ers 21, Arizona 16. Again, I like what the Cardinals are building out there in the desert. They look really good. At least on offense anyway. So here the Cardinals decide to go for two, and they face a defense I can guarantee you they did not prepare for, as San Francisco only has... 10 men lined up on defense. And Arizona has a plan. They're going to pull two players around to block for James Conner on the two-point conversion attempt. How do you stop this with only 10 men? Well, Nick Bosa gets such a great push that he disrupts the timing of the play just enough. Every year teams try it, and every year they learn their lesson. Trying to block Nick Bosa with a tight end? Not a good idea. So the 49ers take over and they've scored on three of their four possessions, but they're only up by five. So they've got to keep their foot on the gas here. And once again, just take a look at this handoff. It's just executed to perfection and the defense reacts. George Kittle also garners the attention of two defenders and the corner defending Brandon Ayuk is set up to the outside. So Ayuk takes the space the defense left behind to the inside. and. Take a look at Brock Purdy. He is already starting this throw before Brandon Ayuk has even started his break, and this is a dime. One more time. What do you need to throw the ball deep? Time. On a day where Christian McCaffrey and Brock Purdy are breaking records set by Jerry Rice and Steve Young, Brandon Ayuk's day somehow got overshadowed. Six targets, six receptions, 148 yards receiving. Christian McCaffrey now has the most consecutive games with a touchdown scored for the 49ers, breaking the record held by Jerry Rice. And here he scores his fourth touchdown of the day. The entire offensive line goes to their left, but Charlie Warner goes to his right, and I think this influenced the linebacker, Ezekiel Turner. The 49ers go up two scores in the fourth quarter, 28 to 16, and Arizona knows they have got to get more points to stay in this ball game. With about 10 minutes left, they're facing third down and long. And San Francisco, very shrewdly, I think, drops everybody back, defending that line to gain. Nobody is open, and eventually the pass rush from Javon Hargrave gets home. It was the only sack of the game, but it was the biggest sack of the game. He always seems to come up with these huge plays when they matter the most. Javon Hargrave shuts down the drive, and now we get a look at what I think makes the 49ers such a dangerous NFL opponent. With the lead in the fourth quarter, they have really... And here we get to what I think is Brock Purdy's best throw of the day. Earlier I said we saw the 49ers' biggest play of the day offensively, but in terms of an outstanding individual effort, I think this is Brock Purdy's best throw of the day. The 49ers have three receivers to one side of the field. The Cardinals shade their defense to that side, leaving Brandon Ayuk one-on-one. -on -one. And the defender is all over him. I mean, he is all over Brandon Ayuk. But his back is turned, making him susceptible to the back shoulder fade. And look where this ball is going, and look at Brock Purdy already starting his throw. That's unguardable. And how many times have we seen this? How many times have we seen Aaron Rodgers do this? Brock Purdy isn't just good. He is a ruthlessly efficient machine that has every weapon in the arsenal. 
35 to 16 is your final score, and the 49ers are a scary good team that has violently announced their presence as a legitimate Super Bowl contender. And that'll do it for this week on Josh's Football Breakdowns. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I read every comment. And I really want to take some time here to thank the people who make this channel possible. You guys, your support means that I can take extra time to really give you guys the quality that you deserve. Thank you so much. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. You humble me and you honor me. Thank you so much. All right. It is going to be Niners and Cowboys on Sunday night football. Juggernaut versus Juggernaut. This is going to be an incredible game. The only thing missing is John Madden and Pat Summerall. I can't remember who said that. But give them the credit, whoever came up with that one. And I don't know what's going to happen in that game, but you know that we are going to break down that film after that game. Be sure to tune in to the Friday show where we recap this game featuring your comments. So again, leave me a comment. And your comment might be on Josh's Football Breakdowns, and I will see you guys on Friday.